in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merciful and compassionate Father, we confess our sins, and we humbly come to you to find forgiveness and life. We come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love, and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people task to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Bless our efforts to use the medicines developed to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for the health workers, but they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome, brothers and sisters in Christ, to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. We are on the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and we celebrate Catechist Sunday. Our priest presider is the Reverend Father Mario Sabrewanite of the Society of St. Paul. He is the spiritual director of the Acts Catholic Prayer Community and is currently assigned at the Divine Master Retreat House in Aritzia, Italy. Let us join the Acts Minstrels in singing the entrance hymn. <laughs> Recognizing that our God is a God of infinite mercy and forgiveness, it is with hope, as sinners, that we go to Him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the Gospel of today, Jesus reveals God as full of mercy and rich in compassion. God is so loving that he's willing to take the extra mile to look for the lost. Today, the Father invites us to go back to his loving embrace through Jesus Christ, his son. As he invites us not only to receive his forgiveness, but to become ourselves persons of forgiveness, forgiving, patient, willing to take back our lost brothers and sisters. We ask forgiveness for those moments when we hardened our hearts and became judgmental of others. Say, I confess. 
to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my mo- fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Sa Dios sa kahita asan. Papuri sa Dios sa kahita asan sa lupa kapayapaan. Papuri sa Dios.
us pray. <clears throat> Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we might feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. God wants to punish the Israelites for their sin of idolatry, but Moses appeals to his covenant promises and is able to obtain mercy for the people. The first reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, this is your God of Israel who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see it how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them, then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with such great power and with so strong a hand? Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. in 
confesses that he was once a blasphemer and a persecutor, the foremost of sinners. But having been granted mercy through Jesus Christ, he now glorifies God. The second reading. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these, I am the foremost. But for that reason, I was mercifully treated so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would become, who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the King of Ages, incorruptible, invisible, the only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us give honor to the Holy Gospel. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and the scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, will not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he, set, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy, and upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin that I lost. And just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he said, a man had two sons, and the younger son said to the father, to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. 
After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance and a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to, far, to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pots on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat, but here I am dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But the father ordered his servants, quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast. Because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field. And on his way back as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, look, all these years I served you and at once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, you swallowed up your property with prostitutes. For him, you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, my son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Experts in the scriptures would tell us that every parable that Jesus tells and narrates speaks always of something new about God. In every parable, you, you find something that will tell you how God looks at things many times so much different from the way we would look at them. Itong ating storya sa ating Ibanghelyo ngayon was occasioned by a comment among the scribes and the Pharisees, the experts in the law, the elite of the people of Israel. They said of Jesus, this one welcomes sinners and eats with them. That is incredible for somebody who's supposed to be a teacher. Does he not know that he's, he's supposed to remain impure? And you cannot deal with people who are considered impure. The publican sinners, the prostitutes, those who are said to be people known who are away from God. You do not deal with them. You do not like to be seen with them. More so, you do not eat with them at the same table. And so Jesus comes up, not with one parable, but with three. It's one describing something of the God of Jesus. And here we immediately notice that though he speaks about the sin, about being lost, about going away, about being disobedient, about not respecting authority, he does not emphasize the ugliness of sin, but rather the incredible mercy of God, his great compassion and his great love that always seeks 
for the return of the sinner so that he may forgive him. In the first parable of today, Jesus presents a pastor, rather a shepherd, who loses a sheep. At dito makikita nyo kaagad kung anong karakteristik ang sinasabi niya. It is the characteristic, characteristic of one who seeks for one lost and leaves 99 as if that one that was lost is the only one he had. Ganun. Anxious, preoccupied, earnest searching. Dapat matagpuan ko siyang nawawala nang maibalik ko siya sa, sa akin. Here, we are presented not just a shepherd, but one who has the heart of a father, preoccupied, anxious for the welfare of the child. And then he presents the other parable of a woman who loses a coin. He put on all the lights in the house just so he may find, she may find that one lost coin. And of course, the long story of the prodigal son, where the father is presented to us as incredible. He was anxious for the return. Daily. Kaya nakita niya agad yung parating na anak kasi araw-araw niyang inaantay ang kanyang pagbalik. A child lost has made anxious the father. Paano na kaya siya? And how he welcomed him back despite of what he had done. Dito nakikita natin, what is the characteristic of this God of Jesus? How does he look at things? Does he look at them as impure, unworthy people are not supposed to be concerned, who has to be ostracized? In that, here he is presented as one who rejoices in the return and in the finding of a lost one. Was, uh, he would even speak about there is greater joy in, in heaven for one sinner that is found, that is returning. Who is this God of Jesus? Then Jesus tells us, he's first a God of mercy, of great understanding, who expresses his omnipotence, his great power, over our sins. Ano man ang kasalanan na nagawa mo, mas dakila ang aking pagmamahal at ang aking kapatawaran. Is a God who is so ready to give His pardon and His forgiveness. Who is mature and yet tender in His judgment. Why? Because He is a God who fights for the Son. Who is caring and caressing. Ang ganda nung sinabi niya, no? ipapangko niya, hindi lang ipapangko, ilalagay niya sa kanyang balikat. One sheep who is lost. Here is a God, you know, who, who, who goes out with His infinite mercy, His unmerited love, His unceasing patience, and His desire that we may recognize Him Hindi ganun ang pananaw ng tao. Ang tao pag nagmahal is because you merit it. Kasi you are worthy to be loved. Because you are amiable, sabi nila. Because you deserve it. Because you've been good. And Santa will give you a gift because he has found you good. When you do not change. Kaya sa story na napakaraming mga kasal, nawawala yung sinasabi, Hindi siya ang taong dati kong nakilala. Hindi na siya ngayon katulad noon. He is a different man or a different woman. He does not deserve anymore my love. This is the problem of human beings. Instead, God, God loves you with ob obstinacy. The hound of heaven who will constantly seek you. Sa kabila ng ikay lumayo sa kanya. I, I love that statement, no? And the moment you turn to him, he will find him immediately. You remember that beautiful statement? Even if it take a thousand steps away from mm -hmm. God, all we need to do is turn around and we find it. Because all this while, he follows us. He's not discouraged by our repeated and constant failures. 
and he will not give up on us. He is the real lover who will not just take no for an answer. He will do everything to tell us, I will still welcome you despite of who you are. Why? Because unlike human beings, I do not look at persons and love them because of merits, because they are deserving, because they are worthy, because rightfully they have to be loved, because correctly they have to be loved, because justly they have to be loved. Why? Because none of us deserves that. Saint Paul mismo will say it. Will make will say it. My life is undeserved grace. No one merits God's love. It is given to us as absolutely free. Kaya ang tawag na dyan is grace. It is undeserved. It is unmerited. It is infinite. It is without measure. And it is this love that we, when we accept, makes us lovable. And then despite of our past, we can look at the future with hope. God sometimes permits us to sin, to fall. Diba? Tignan mo yung anak. You know? Nakakatuwa sapagkat may gradation yung tatlong, tatlong ito. And I believe the Lord, that Jesus presented all of these three para we will get it right. That your God is not just a God who wants justice and is a God who is a punishing, punishing God. Is first the God of compassion and mercy. Isang daan, iniwanan lahat ang 99 para hanapin ang nag-iisa. As if yun lang ang the real shit niya. Na wala ang sampo, hinanap ang isa with much searching and with zeal to find it, the one coin that was lost. This time, isa ang lalawa na wala sa dalawa. And you know what the father says? He doesn't look for it. He, ex he waits for it with much respect. He has decided to leave me. Love for love to be true. It has to be free. Aantayin ko siya. But all this while waiting with great patience. <clears throat> Kapatid, once we are lost we're able and are able to recover, then we do the importance of what we have lost. Sometimes he leads us to go and this, this, uh, this away from him so that we can feel the unsatisfaction we will have without him. St. Augustine, our hearts will be restless until we find rest in you. Sometimes you have to lose him in order to find that our life is without meaning, without him. Today, my brothers and sisters, Jesus beautifully in three parables tell us that God has one real name. Mercy. Compassion. The same thing. For the love of God is so great. So great, in fact, that the return of just one makes all of heaven rejoice. Ito pong maganda. Nang winalkam niya yung anak, he did not even ask, bakit kaya bumalik to? Ginutom siguro na wala na kasi ng pera, wala ng future, wala nang mapupuntahan. Ito ba'y tunay na nagsisisi o nagsisisi lamang sapagat nawala na sa kanyang lahat? God was not even interested with that. All he knew was the son was coming back. And he saw him from afar because he had been waiting for him. He runs to meet him. He falls at his neck. He does not permit him to say, I'm sorry. Because repeating what he had, what he had done, itong ganda ng nabasa ko. When he did not permit him to speak, he was wanting to save him from his heart that was accusing him. Ibang klase, ano? Ayon yung payagan na i-accuse pa niya ang sarili niya. Then ito, and it was also to save him from the burden of his past. Incredible God. Pero ang storya hindi natatapos dyan ha. Sapagat ang emphasis dito ngayon is not so much on whether the sinners have to come back, but whether those who are seemingly righteous are able to show mercy. And I refer to that, that to the elder son. Nagka-crisis ang elder son. 
when he did not know that the other brother was coming and there was a party that was being prepared for him and that the fattened calf has been killed for the feast. Oh, there was so much that was happening in his heart. He was unhappy with what was happening. Why? Because he had always lived in the context of, he does not deserve it. I deserve that. Kaya para sa kanya, my brother does not deserve this. Ako, I have been a good boy. I had always obeyed my father. I didn't never left my father. I was diligent and I have worked hard. I was always there to take care of him. It may all have been true, but the problem was this. He felt so righteous that before this other brother, he felt entitled. Yun ang pinakang grabing pwedeng bubagsak sa isang who feels he's always right before God. Entitlement. Sa mga entitled sa mga videos na napapanood mo, ito yung mga ginagamit na katagay. You do not belong here. You are not supposed to be here. We do not need you here. Go back to your own country. You are not ours. Wala ka dapat dito. Why? Because you do not deserve all of this. But this feeling of entitlement made him even to resent his father. He was angry at his father. He did not like to enter into the house. He was judging his brother with finality. He, is, he has dissipated everything with his prostitute. And then he was induced. Kasi pag ito'y pinasok pa, yung kanyang kaparting binala niya, mababawasan yung kaparti ko in the inheritance. His heart has become hardened with unforgiveness. And he sees the action of his father as unfair. Unfair ka. He has become envious of his father's love for the other brother. And he even went to the threat. Oh, ang sabi niya, hindi ako papasok sa bahay na yan hanggang mo hindi mo pinapalis ang isang yan. Why? Because all this while I've worked hard for you. Ayun ang tingin niya sa sarili niya. He was an employee who had to be given the salary and deserves what he had worked for. He did not see the father as one was truly a father and a father to his, to his brother. In fact, sinabi na, that son of yours, ay wala na siyang pakialam. Sa mga impure, sa mga hindi nakaraan dapat, wala na akong pakialam sa inyo. His ego has become the better of him. I deserve better. And with a pointing finger, he does not deserve this. Mga kapatid, he has become not like his father. At that point, he is not his father's son. We will fail. We are sinners. We are weak. But if you are unable to become merciful and forgiving, then we will not become like our father. Today, we are asked, have you experienced ba talaga yung forgiveness of the Lord? Because only he who has felt I am not deserving of God's love will become a forgiving person. Only he who will recognize all the gifts that he has and says they are unmerited will become himself a giving person. Today, let us pray that we will not become the older brother. Today, may we understand that all the three parables were to underline to us the one great character of God. In fact, Pope Francis says, His name is mercy, compassion, infinite love, or love that does not measure, love that is willing to take back, love that is welcoming, love that truly cares. Let that be our love. And so we now proclaim, I believe in one God. The Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, 
and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayer of the faithful. God of our Father, you reconcile the world to yourself and entrust to us the message of reconciliation. Help us to remain faithful to this calling and mission as we say, Father, help us become your face of love and mercy. Father, Help us become your face of love and mercy. Merciful Father, empower us, your church, to lovingly reflect the values of the gospel and your message of reconciliation. We pray. Father, help us become your face of love and mercy. Merciful Father, help all public servants foster a healthy, inclusive and compassionate dialogue always and everywhere we pray father help us become your face of love and mercy merciful father sustain our brother and sister catechists that they may continue to foster personal and loving encounters with you we pray father Help us become your face of love and mercy. Merciful Father, continue to protect our viewers, the homebound and their families, and through the powerful intercession of our Blessed Mother, grant all intentions and requests offered through this Mass, we pray. Father, help us become your face of love and mercy. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Father, help us become your face of love and mercy. God of compassion and mercy, you search and embrace us back into your loving arms. Move our hearts to remain on this path to holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, it's your sacrifice in mine. 
be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity. And even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself. That the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation to Christ our Lord. <laughs> Through him, the host of angels adores in majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. of a holiness. May holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> By the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the blood and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with our bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. And a special man, the Lord, we ask that you grant eternal repose to Dr. Melvin Sumagaysay, an ex-Pauline seminarian, who is coming also from Santa, was coming from Santa Barbara, and actually is the family's doctor. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In the prayer that Jesus taught us, we ask God to forgive us our sins, but we put the condition on ourselves that we may forgive others who have sinned against us. To be like our Father, forgiving, merciful, compassionate, loving. We pray the Our Father. <laughs> Deliver us, O Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not, Lord, in our sins, but in the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. From the heart, a blessing of peace, ardent compassion, and mercy to the people around us. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Father. Peace be with you, Father. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us together pray this prayer for a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> May the working of this heavenly gift, O oh Lord, we pray, take possessions of our minds and our bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, ibang challenge ni Lord, ano? Our God according to Jesus, is firstly not a policeman, but a God of mercy, not a judge, 
but a God of compassion, not one who is concerned about the ugliness of sin, but whose one desire is to bring the sinner back, the sinner back to him, so that he may forgive him. Today, sa misa pong ito, in a very short book of wine, alam ko dami tao mga nakasakit sa akin. People have hurt us in one way or another. Today, we bring all of these people who have hurt us, living or dead, that we may have the joy of knowing that we are like our Father. Lord, nasaktan din kami minsan. Expectations na hindi narating. Frustrated because we loved and have not been loved back. Lord, we ask you today, bless all of these people. Grant them your forgiveness and grant me a heart that is able to forgive. Lord, you are a God of compassion and mercy and as you have shown me that compassion constantly, may I have a heart that is forgiving, compassionate, merciful, loving without measure. For only by then may I be, can I be, be called truly your child. Basbasa niyo po ang lahat ng mga tao ito na aking nasaktan at dahil sa kanila ay ako din nasaktan that we may one day rejoice together with you in the eternal happiness of heaven where you will gather all your sons and daughters whom you truly love. This is our prayer to Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God come upon you and remain with you always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace and love of the Lord. Thanks be to God.